Hey guys, in this video I'm going to test this BMS from Max K Go company. This is 4S version for lithium iron phosphate batteries. This BMS can pass through for discharge 200 amps and for charging it can pass through 60 amps. What is interesting about this BMS, it has built-in active balancer which can balance up to 2 amps. For this BMS I'm going to perform multiple tests, low and high voltage cell disconnect. Then we'll see if this BMS can actually push 2 amps into the cell when it's balancing. And then we'll try to push 200 amps through this BMS for discharge test and then we'll do 60 amps charge test. Let me connect this BMS to the battery and we'll start tests. Alright, so here is a test setup for low and high voltage disconnect. Uh, I soldered wires to BMS. This is two 6 gauge wires on each side. And then we have this small battery bank with uh, this monitor where cell number one is the lowest cell and cell number three is the highest cell. So first I'm going to discharge cell number one and we'll see when it's going to cut off voltage. Right, and now for high voltage disconnect, I'm just going to charge entire pack with one charger and I'm going to charge individual cell with a second charger. And now let's see how many amps this BMS can push into the cell when it's balancing. So right now BMS is activated, it's working. We have cell voltage different, one volt. And um, right here we have small switch which is going to activate balancing and we have ammeter connected to cell number one, lowest cell. So let's see how it works. So I'm just going to activate BMS. And actually right here is 1.4 amps of the current is going into the cell number one, which is actually unexpected. I thought it's not going to balance with 1.4 amps just from my experience testing other BMSs because it doesn't have any capacitors. So it's just like opening bridge between one cell to another cell. And uh, right now we have uh, amperage 1.2 amps. So I'm going to stop balancing test at this point. I'm just going to move to discharge and charge test. And I will leave this BMS later with this small pack overnight. And we will see what is the results is going to be at night. So right now we have these voltages. Now I'm going to connect this BMS to bigger battery bank and we'll do a discharge test with 200 amps and charge test with 60 amps. Alright, so here is the setup. BMS connected to Victron shunt and then to battery negative. Right here we have all wires going into individual cell. This BMS is not participating in, in test at all. And um, here is a re-energy inverter and I'm going to draw 200 amps for 10 minutes and then we'll measure temperature for this BMS. I will try to get as close as possible to 200 amps. Let's start this test. So here we are after 10 minutes of running test with the 200 amps and let's see what is the temperature for BMS. So it's about 100 Fahrenheit. So it looks like this BMS is rated correctly and it's handling 200 amps without overheating. And uh, here we are after 10 minutes of charging test. We're charging with 65 amps. And let's see what is the temperature of the BMS. So we have 75 on one side and um, 75. and about same temperature on the other side. And uh, in my garage it's about 60 Fahrenheit. So basically this BMS is not heating up at all with, uh, I mean, just 15 Fahrenheit uh, in a 65 amp charge test. Okay, so I connected BMS back to the small battery. Right now is um, 10 p.m. I'm going to leave this battery overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and see how well cells is going to be balanced. So I'm just going to activate balancing. Right now voltage different is 800 millivolts and to give this BMS more chances to balance I'm going to connect charger charger 
charge with one amp and leave this overnight. So charging battery will give much more chances this BMS to balance battery because it's going to keep all cells high and the voltage difference between lowest cell and highest cell is going to be bigger. Okay, so let's come back in the morning and see results. All right, so here we are in the morning. Right now is almost 10 a.m. So we had uh, about 12 hours of balancing and um, cell voltage difference at this point is uh, 365 millivolts. And uh, now I'm going to disconnect BMS and we'll test capacity on a cell number one. We'll see how many amp hours in this cell. Here is the results of capacity test after two hours. We pulled from a cell 9.7 amp hours. And just to confirm, if we're going to use BMS without active balancer, at this test we're gonna see closer to zero amp hours because all other cells were fully charged and BMS will not allow charging entire pack and especially not allow to charge this cell. And because this BMS has an active balancer, it was able, active balancer was able to push energy from three cells into this one cell. And uh, basically over 12 hours, we've got 9.7 amp hours. So basically this is roughly you can expect when you're going to connect this battery to, to any battery bank. All right, so to summarize this BMS, for active balancer, I didn't see two amps maximum we saw 1.4 amps with a one volt difference across cells which is a huge difference for lithium iron phosphate batteries for charge and discharge test this bms handled those tests perfectly it was not overheating at all and i think it's correctly rated for 200 amps for discharge and for charge we did even with 65 amps and it was not heating up at all so maybe it, it even can handle more amps all right, so if you think I missed any test or you want to see any additional data, please let me know. And as always, thank you for watching and see you later.